chandeliers. Call to order the uh, Gurney Village Board regular meeting of January 23rd, 2023. Roll call, please. Woodside. Whoa. <coughs> Ross. Here. Garner. Here. O'Brien. Present. Bomas. Present. Thorstenson. Four present, two absent. Okay, this time we're going to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and <coughs> Boy Scout Troop's going to lead us, so. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That was much appreciated. <laughs> I told them that they didn't have to stay and listen to grown-ups talk all night. So. <clears throat> so to start on the first item on the agenda, to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Motion by Trustee Balmas, second by Trustee O'Brien. Roll call, please. Uh, Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Balmas. Aye. For aye. Motion carries. Pat. Item number one, approval of the minutes on the January 9th, 2023 meeting. Item number two, approval of Public Works Department recommendation to award the outdoor material bin replacement project design and bid document preparation to Holabard and Root LLC at a cost not to exceed $31,000. Item number three, Approval of payroll for period ending January 13, 2023, in the amount of $952,226.59. Item number four, approval of bills for period ending January 23, 2023, in the amount of $1,562,964.02. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Trust, motion by Trustee Garner, second by Trustee Ross. Roll call, please. Ross. Aye. Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Balmas? Aye. Four aye. Motion carries. Uh, petition and communications? No. None. No reports? Correct. No old business? Correct. On to new business. Item number one, approval of ordinance 2023. 06. Adding one class one liquor license by amending section 6-56 of article two of chapter six of the Gurney Municipal Code entitled Alcoholic Beverages, College of Lake County Advanced Technology Center, 7735 West Grand Avenue. Pat? Sure, so CLC has requested a class one uh, liquor license in conjunction with the opening of the Advanced Technology Center uh, over at Grand and Rollins. Uh, this would be used for uh, when they have events on site. So it's not like there's a, a bar on campus for the students or anything. This is when they have special events on site. Uh, police department conducted all the necessary background checks, found nothing to disqualify um, the request. Uh, I believe we have a rep from CLC here, um, Christine Clippert. If there's any questions from the village board, otherwise it's ready for your consideration. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion, motion by Trustee Balmas, second by Trustee Garner. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Bomas. Aye. Four aye. Motion carries. Approval of Ordinance 2023-07. Granting an exception to the underlying use regulations of the 01 Restricted Office District and an amendment to an existing PUD, <coughs> Ordinance 2010-32, to establish inpatient treatment facility as an authorized special use in the 01 District for property located at 3915 Oglesby Avenue. Pat? Sure, uh, so the next two items on the agenda are related, so I'll summarize them here together uh, and then turn it over to the petitioner to fill any blanks that I missed. I had a memo in your packet from our planning manager, Tracy Velcover on this. Lake Harbor Treatment is uh, requesting to allow establishment and operation of a approximate 30 bed dual diagnosis inpatient treatment facility uh, focusing on substance abuse and mental health at 3915 Oglesby. Uh, those familiar with the area, um, this parcel is set back off of Greenleaf behind a private property, um, Oglesby um, Avenue. Uh, actually, it kind of acts as a driveway back to this property, so there's no frontage um, on Greenleaf uh, or on Oglesby for this property. 
260 feet back from Greenleaf. Uh, it's the property zoned 01, it was zoned that in 2010 with the PUD, um, as indicated in the staff memo. Um, to accomplish what they're looking to do back there, uh, they need an exception to the underlying zoning use regulations, an amendment to the PUD uh, agreement and ordinance to establish inpatient treatment facilities and authorized special use permit in the PUD. And then the next item under um, new business is the actual uh, special use itself. Uh, brief description of the project, uh, converting the 12,000 square foot medical office building to, as I said before, about a 30 bed inpatient treatment facility. I expect uh, it to be occupied on average uh, about 75% of the time or 75% of the beds on average, uh, <clears throat> moving seven parking stalls south of the building to install a fenced-in area in gazebo. Um, the facility is uh, licensed by the state of Illinois. The patients are given background checks and screened uh, before their uh, admitted entrance into it. Pr private facility, so patients uh, do not come through this via the criminal justice system, and instead it's a voluntary admission for treatment paid either by insurance or cash. Um, typical, typical patients uh, dealing with uh, depression, PTSD, or anxiety, um, they're about 28 days. Uh, patient meals are brought in from a local restaurant. Um, transportation, um, when it's off-site, is provided by the facility, uh, so you don't have uh, personal vehicles there of those that are patients at the facility. Uh, and they estimate about 65 uh, total employees with about 25 um, expected on their largest shift. So. I, I talked a little bit about Oglesby and where that's located um, down the road, so there won't be any uh, signage. Um, the petitioner is completely fine with that. Um, the zoning ordinance doesn't call it an inpatient treatment facility currently. We have some uses that are somewhat similar, um, but not quite a good fit for this. Um, so that is where um, the exception, exception comes in to add this new um, designation um, into the, the PUD or into this um, underlying zoning and then allow it as a special use permit. So um, was before the planning and zoning board uh, and both of the requests received unanimous six to zero favorable recommendations um, and is before you tonight for consideration. And as I said, Hal Frank is here on behalf of the petitioner um, and can fill in anything I missed or answer questions for the board. Mr. Frank, do you plan on making a presentation or not?
Thank you, Mr. Frank. So I think we'll start with just uh, questions, if that's okay, and then if a presentation or further needs to be done. But I, I take it there isn't, we're not seeing anything up here, right? Is there no visual? I, I have one from the Planning and Zoning Board that has some background information if, they, if there's need. Okay. So let me start to my right and just see if there's questions or clarification that need to be had. I just have a comment that it, um, it was very clear and it was very well done, the presentation that we received. Okay. Thanks, Ms. Ross. To my left, Trustee Balmas or Trustee Garner. I would like to just make a statement that, um, <clears throat> for the record, that I have worked on both sides of the opioid crisis in, in, in the country. I sold pharmaceuticals, opioids uh, specifically, um, and educated physicians on the features, advantages, and benefits uh, of opioids for probably 20 years. And currently I work on the opposite side of the argument where I work for a methadone clinic where patients come in daily to receive methadone who are trying to manage their addiction. Um, as a result, I can tell you that, you know, working both sides, I had some, a lot of uh, reservations about, um, you know, those types of patients and their behaviors, if you will, um, and I found that I was dead wrong. Um, as I said, every day I work in a methadone clinic uh, where patients of all types come in, insured, uninsured, cash paying, and we have zero problems, and it's actually on Greenleaf. Um, most uh, residents have no idea that it's there. Uh, they come and go uh, daily, um, but I think the, the benefit uh, has to be there if we're going <clears> to, <throat> at some point, try to address the opioid addiction in America. So um, if, you know, I just wanted to state that because um, there's a lot of people out there, more than you think, of all stripes, uh, you know, professional, um, down and out, homeless, uh, you name it, all of us have a problem with addictions, uh, with addiction. And so um, I just think uh, where this place is, is located, for those who don't want to see it, it's off the street. It's, uh, there, it's not on the frontage of, of Greenleaf. Um, it, uh, it, you know, it's a 28-day facility um, that's going to help somebody who wants to be helped. Um, I don't see it as a problem at all. And, and as I said, I, I've worked uh, for many years on both sides of the equation, and, and I am comfortable with um, uh, this facility coming to Gurney. Thank you, Trustee Garner. Trustee Balmas, any comments, statements? No, no, if you want, I'll make a motion. Motion by Trustee second. Balmas, second by Trustee Garner. <coughs> Roll call, please. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Thomas. Aye. Four aye. Welcome to Gurney. Thanks. Oh, sorry. One more aye. That's right. Sorry. We have one more to do. Um, so with reference to the second item um, for approval of ordinance 2023. Zero eight. Zero eight. Is there a motion on that? So moved. Second. Motion by <laughs> Trustee O'Brien. Second by Trustee Ross. Okay. Roll call, please. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Four aye. Motion carries. Now I can welcome you to the village of Gurney. <laughs> so our business is concluded for tonight. I'm guessing that the rest of you are here for public comment. <clears throat> How smart of me, right? So, um, so we have public comments. So we just would ask that you would stand and you'd state your name. And uh, the purpose is just that public comment is that there won't be an interaction from us, which is always somewhat not very satisfying. But what we do our best to do is listen to what you have to say. And I'll take notes or we'll take notes and then work on answering those questions. Uh, if there's some questions or if it's just comments that you want to make, that's fine too. Uh, so um, we'll start with Mr. Owen. And then anybody else that would like to speak, you would just need to state your name and, and we'll listen.
Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak or thank you, Mr. Owen, for that? Sure. I thought so. So, 
Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Should have let you go first with that child, don't you think? Thank you. Ma'am, you can come up, yes. Thank you. Ma'am, can you not walk to the microphone? Do you want me to? I can bring a microphone to you. No? Thank you, ma'am. What we're here to do is get parents here living in a nursing home for six years uh, and during a decline in Alzheimer's. I can tell you, I, I can't even imagine what it would have been like if the nursing home she was in had endured having a fuel station across the street.
else like to talk?
Anybody else have any comments? There's nothing further than at this point. Um, wasn't fast enough, was I?
You're going to test me, aren't you, Keith? Is that a promise? <laughs> kept your promise. Good. Go once, twice, three times. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Trustee Balmas. Second by Trustee O'Brien. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much for coming out. It's important to us to hear from the residents, so I appreciate your um, way you presented yourself. It was uh, honorable. And uh, I just appreciate that. It's uh, something we need to hear. So thanks. Have a good night.